Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this conference. I, I'm very sorry I'm not there with you, but I am here in Brussels in the delegation of the past country, so I feel I am in a way uh, with you uh, in this uh, piece of, uh, of Basque country in, uh, in Brussels. When I first read the title of the conference, I thought it was absolutely brilliant because it captures three essential keywords of our time. First of all, humanity, because we should never forget that everything that we do is about having people at the center, and we should never forget our values of solidarity and generosity and what makes each and every one a unique uh, technology. This is pretty straightforward, although we should never forget uh, that there are a lot of opportunities uh, and possibilities offered by technologies, but there are also some challenges and some pitfalls, and we have to address them. And then intelligence, and then I thought this was uh, very interesting, because I was wondering what kind of intelligence are we talking about? Are we talking about artificial intelligence? Are we talking about uh, skills intelligence? Uh, or are we talking about human intelligence? So that creativity, innovation, uh, critical thinking, uh, this is absolutely essential um, to uh, move forward in this era. I like to think all of them are relevant for our discussion. And of course, vocational education and training is at the crossroad of all this. It should evolve and adapt to uh, take uh, the pace with the time, but it should also be a motor to ensure that we can take up the opportunities available to us, thanks to technology, but in a smart and a humane way. The pandemic has taken a terrible toll uh, for everyone across the globe. It has also exposed our vulnerabilities and it has largely uh, caught us unprepared in many areas, including those that are important for us today, which are education and training and the labor market. And it has also had a, an effect of accelerating something that we all knew about and that we had talking about for many decades, I would say. We have all been talking about the opportunities of technology, the opportunities of digital learning, but then yet when all learning had to move online overnight, we were still unprepared. But the good thing is that in that very moment we stopped debating and talking among ourselves about all the reasons why we should not or we could not uh, take up these opportunities, and we just started doing it, of course, with different degrees of success um, in the different regions, mostly linked also to the availability of digital skills, availability of digital infrastructure, the degree to which our pedagogies were already taking into account these opportunities. Technology in these past years, past year and a half, has proved that it can help us bring education and training um, closer to people, independently from where they are, independently whether they have special needs. It has also brought tremendous innovation, of which I'm sure we will see many examples throughout this conference. If we think about virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, this is something that is allowing us to train and to have a true work-based experience, even in areas where we could not do it because they are too difficult or too dangerous for people who are not already trained to, uh, to have a practical experience. Yet, it has been used increasingly by innovative and excellent VET uh, centers and programs in Europe. Technology also proved essential in reducing the disruption in the labor market, allowing people to work remotely. If we think about uh, the fact that four out of ten uh, people took out um, teleworking during the pandemic, it's 40 percent of the EU workforce that all of a sudden had to start working online. And then we know from surveys that 50% of people would, that are now teleworking would really like to keep on teleworking because it allows 
for a better, in some ways, in some cases, for a better work-life balance. It allows for less pollution when we are all commuting to our place of work every morning and then back uh, every evening. Of course, again, to take up this opportunity, we need to be bold, we need to be courageous, and we need the digital skills to do it, from basic to advanced. And of course, the array of soft skills that allow us to bring out the humanity and the intelligence in the technology. In 2020, the Commission put forward a number of initiatives uh, for skills in the labour market in response to the pandemic. Uh, early on, uh, when uh, uh, the, the lockdown started and people started losing their job, um, we put forward an instrument called SURE, which is short for support to unemployment risks in an emergency. Well, SURE helped cushion the rise in unemployment, keeping over 31 million workers in a job and supporting 2.5 million companies across Europe. Last summer, we adopted also the European Skills Agenda to improve the relevance of skills in the EU to strengthen sustainable competitiveness and ensure social fairness and build resilience in the EU. We also adopted the Youth Employment Support Package, which strengthens the Youth Guarantee and the European Alliance for Apprenticeships. Last but certainly not least, in November 2020 marked a very important moment for European cooperation in vocational education and training. I would say a historic moment for our cooperation because for the first time we had a council recommendation for vocational education and training in a holistic way, tackling young people and older people, uh, tackling teachers and learners, tackling funding instruments and a vision for that. At the same time, Member States, together with, other, with the other European economic area countries, the candidate countries and the European social partners, took even a step forward and endorsed the Osnabrück Declaration on European Cooperation on VET. An European association of VET providers and learners' representatives are fully involved, were fully involved in the preparation of these two initiatives and are now fully involved in their implementation. So we'll start with a short focus on the VET recommendation, which sets three very important collective uh, quantitative objectives. So first of all, we want to achieve by 2025 a share of employed graduates from VET of at least 82%. We want at least 60% of VET recent graduates to benefit from exposure to work-based learning. And finally, we want eight, at least 8% 8 of learners in VET to benefit from a learning mobility opportunity abroad, which is challenging in this time where we still have many restrictions, but that is essential to build a European spirit, but also to learn many work and life skills. Um, the recommendation focuses on a number of very important principles that are now being reflected in the work at EU and national level. First of all, that needs to be agile in adapting to dynamic labour markets. Uh, it has to be flexible and it has to be uh, offering uh, progression opportunities and progression opportunities also to different education and training sectors. Third, VET is a driver for innovation and growth. VET is attractive and based on a modernized and digitized offer. It offers equal opportunities. It is underpinned by quality assurance and by effective governance involving all stakeholders, because VET, for its special uh, place uh, between education and training and the labour market, is really at the heart of our communities and our economies. And this should be reflected in a partnership approach among all that are involved. Member States now are working on implementation plans to be uh, presented by May next year. And we in the Commission are working uh, closely with them uh, to support as we can. But of course, this is not 
the only thing that the recommendation asked us to do in the Commission. It also asked us to work on some very important initiative, uh, initiatives at uh, EU level. And one uh, of the most important initiatives, I would say, maybe the jewel, the crown jewel of the work that we are now carrying out uh, at EU level are the centers of vocational excellence for which I am very pleased and grateful to say uh, that the Basque experience has been from the very beginning a source of inspiration and a best practice. So thank you very much for that. And we, we will continue to learn from this excellent experience. But you will hear much more about the EU work on centers of vocational excellence from my colleague Joao Santos uh, tomorrow. Uh, while the VET recommendation sets out a broader vision for reforms in VET, the Osnabrück Declaration sets out concrete and shorter-term actions around four main objectives. First, the resilience and excellence through quality, inclusive and flexible VET. Second, establishing a new life learning culture, uh, showing the relevance of continuing uh, vocational education and training and making use of digitalization. Third, sustainability and the green link in VET. And fourth, the place of VET in the European education area and globally in the world as an um, example of excellence. I would like to conclude uh, this intervention by talking about funding. So to support the recovery and the digital and the green transition, there are currently unprecedented levels of resources available at the EU level. So you will probably be familiar with some of our flagship uh, funds that have supported already skills development through this year. So the European Social Fund, Erasmus Plus, of course, the Digital Europe program and InvestEU, and this has been strengthened and reinforced in the current programming period to support also specifically skills development for the recovery and for the twin transition. But um, the biggest, the largest novelty, I would say, is the new recovery and resilience facility that was ad adopted uh, last year and that has made available over 600 and 70 billion euro for investment in support of uh, the recovery, the growth of our economy, the well-being of our citizens. And we are delighted to see uh, as the national implementation plans for, for the recovery and resilience facility come in, we are very happy to see that a very significant chunk of this spending is being allocated to social issues, labor market and skills, education, social policies, health, and long-term care. And finally, our president, Ursula von der Leyen, in her State of the European Union in September, has launched a structured dialogue with member states on digital skills, uh, a dialogue that will span all council formations, so all ministries at the national level, because if we want to move forward, we need to all be on the same page. And digital skills are not only something that we do in education and training, are not so only something that is needed for the labor market. This is clear. We need a joint effort and we need to talk to each other. So, dear participants, dear all, um, we know what we need to do. We have a very clear roadmap of what we want to achieve and how to get there. We have the resources to get there, to help us in this endeavor. Now, we only need to start working together to achieve these objectives. So once again, thank you very much, and I wish you an excellent continuation of this conference. Thank you.